So welcome into TechSax Rewind. Yo soy David Nuno. Como estas? Hey, uh, Eric Casares there at the uh, News and Social Center. What is different about the desk today? Uh, oh, there's a bun there's a there's a helmet. There's a baseball baseball cap. So was that acting, or did you really not recognize it? No, I actually did not recognize that until you asked me. Did you not hear the nine minute segment we just had with Elizabeth Oblock, who mentioned that you didn't? This nine is, minutes. Okay, it was like. Nine 30, seconds? 39 seconds. <laughs> Did you not notice that's what she... No. I was getting things ready for the show tomorrow. Nick, I know you were paying attention, right? Of course. We'll I have to look at you for three hours a day, so yeah. Why do you say it rudely? Like it's like a, such a terrible thing. Well... Like, I mean, I'm not... Obviously, you're not looking at me. You're looking nah, through me. I'm looking at a TV where you are on... Let's see. One, two, three, four, five different screens five different angles of five myself? different angles oh yeah. my that's terrible sorry yeah, about that it is what do we have on the show today nick well we had like you said loaded but we had ob talked about his uh, big shots of the week billy lucci new running back coach so got a little insight from him trisha ford was in the studio to talk about uh softball off their you know their hot start and uh tom hart we had tom hart on Tom Hart. Yeah, Tom Hart was good. He'll be at the game uh, tomorrow. What are we doing back here? What? Just waving. Why does he always wave? What's the what's wrong with waving? There's nothing. Why do you always have to argue with everything? Why are you know. such a contrarian? Hey, he, you should knock down his letter grade a little bit. Like he. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> like Nick, everything with you is an argument. No. Yes. When have we ever argued? Right here, live I, on air. Right now. This isn't on air. This is. You could be watching it are an you, hour from now, two hours from now. It's still thirty on days from now. Camera. Mm. See, arguing about arguing. If anybody cared about that little two minutes little snippet that we did, let me know. If you didn't care, please don't tell. Watch me. our shorts too; they're really entertaining. Oh, hey, I gotta tell people. Can hey, just... do that. Do that. Here's the here's the rewind. We'll talk about it in a second. Fine. Acknowledge the big shot that was Wade Taylor. Yep. Yep, that was my basketball I guy. I mean, he probably, well, look, he had a really strong case to be SEC Player of the Year He was, of the week. He wasn't, but he averaged 22 and a half points, and I think it was 5.5 assists, and just, just had three turnovers all week, shot 15 of 16 to free throw line, 9 of 18 uh, from three-point range. I mean, he was spectacular. He was spectacular. Very definition of the big shot. Look, the Aggies need somebody to score when – Boots is off, and the front court's been really good recently. It depends if it's Henry or if it's Julius. Wade was the kind of the one about two weeks ago that was falling a little bit behind, just with a little bit of a slump. He is out of that slump. He is leading the way. He's hitting open three point shots. Um, and, you know, the one that keeps coming to mind is the one he missed that almost went in that would have yeah. made the game be completely over. But regardless, uh, he has played such a great ball. And what, one of the things that Buzz said yesterday that I think is very true. He's being more patient. He's reading the game, right? Something that a, a lot of guys, like, there may be a shot you, that you can hit because it's an open shot, but read the situation, right? Read the time. Read what, what is going on right now. If it makes more sense to pass it back around, attack differently, he's doing that, and he's being a little bit more patient with the ball. Yeah, I think the really the only uh, point of criticism ever on Wade was that sometimes he forced things that he didn't have to. Yeah. And it does look like he's taken like a step back to slow down a little bit. And uh, he's playing harder is never an issue for him. He plays hard all the time, but he's also playing really smart right now. Yep. Let's do uh, a couple of softball names because I think they, they deserve their love as well. The co SEC player of the week is Trinity Cannon. She was huge for Texas A&M this past weekend. And uh, yeah, batted 667. 11 runs scored, 8 hits, 6 RBI, also had 2 doubles, a home run, 8 walks over 6 innings uh, at the Invitational this past week, and she had a 1.083 slugging percentage and 810 on-base percentage, her first SEC weekly honor. Um, and uh, she basically started nearly every game in 2022 at third base and now made the switch to first base, so congratulations to her. Big, yeah. big number. So I, I guess that means she went 8 of 12 for the weekend, 667. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good math right there, my friend. How about Emily Levitt? Seven innings, four hits, eight Ks, one rock, walk, walk, excuse me. I learned English yesterday. And no runs. Billy, last thing for you. Does it feel to you, and to me it does, that the coaching staff is better right now than it was a year ago? No, no question in my mind. No question in my mind. I mean, 
Daryl Dickey's a really good coach. He had, a, he, he had a, I said had, he probably will still coach at some point, a, a highly successful career. But in this role, in this position, he was not the OC. It was Jimbo. Now you've got Jimbo, and maybe you can get the best of Jimbo. And then you've added a, a guy in Bobby Petrino whose track record can really stand up to damn near anyone in the game. You know, and, and, you know, the question is, how will they mesh? How will it work? Some people say, is, you know, is the game passed him by? I, I, don't, I think that part's laughable. Um, you just see an, like an age and you assume something that I, I think that part is, if you're asking that question, you're just looking for questions to ask or you just really haven't paid attention to what he does offensively. Um, but, yeah, you've added a guy whose resume and body of work will go up against anyone's in the game. And then I, I just, I really do think you've, you've done a nice thing here with, uh, with Markwell Blackwell out of Ole Miss. I think they, look, it took a while. It took longer than I would have liked to have seen it take, to be honest. But at the end of the day, what we've always said is it matters a hell of a lot more who you end up with. It matters a hell of a lot more who you end up with and how long it takes. So, it did take a while. I, I would love to have had him hired in a week and had him out recruiting for the last several weeks, uh, but it didn't happen that way. But at the end of the day, what matters infinitely more is who'd you get. And if you had told me at the start of this search, if you said the name Marquel Blackwell, I would have had a, have, I would have had no idea who he was. I would have googled him, and I would have, <laughs> which which is exactly what happened a couple of days ago. I'm Googling and going, oh, at first, I wouldn't have taken long either. I said, oh, he's at Ole Miss last year? Okay. And then as I dug in, as I made some phone calls uh, Sunday, Sunday night, it was uh, it was pretty exciting. And the deal was, is, is this deal done? I think it was done uh, at some point over the weekend. Playing a game where you've scored 25 runs to now taking on some of the top teams in the country, three ranked teams, including Thursday morning, Oklahoma State. Yeah, this, this is the good stuff, right? Yeah. And, and and we're going to hit some bumps, and I've talked about that a little bit, um, but we're going to hit some good bumps. I mean, we just the next two weeks, really, for me, is time for us to really learn. Learn about who we are, what we need to work on, what we're doing really well. Um, and and I, I don't know, I'm excited. Like, we have nothing to lose. Like, all the pressure is on Okie State. You know, all the pressure is on Arizona. All the pressure is on... Um, UCF. U, yeah, UCF. I mean, all of them are postseason teams, um, as we were as well. But um, I don't know. I, I enjoy this. I, en- I enjoy the, the fight. And this kind of weekend, too, whatever happens, I think it makes you better for conference play later. Absolutely. I mean, this is just – I always say, like, these are tools. Like, you're going to put in your box. You're going to be able to pull out at, at a different time in the season. And um, we're going to learn. And we're going to face Maxwell, I'm assuming, who is their lefty stud pitcher that, you know, throws three speeds up, down, and change. Um, but all that's going to do is make us better right. and get us ready for conference. Last thing for you, first time in a couple of years that uh, the A&M softball team has been ranked in the top 25 very early. I know a lot of season has to go on. But nice to see the recognition, right? Yeah, it is. Um, I, you know, I don't mind not being ranked right now. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I hope that we surprise some people. And, but yes, I mean, it's a great thing to celebrate. But it's not, like you said, it's early in the season. I want us to, I want us to put our heads down and just get after it. Since we last spoke, Texas and OU officially going to be joining in 2024. It looks like uh, just, I was reading an article this morning from Matt Hayes and just. Since the announcement, the initial announcement back in July of 2021 when we were there um, in Alabama for SEC Media Days in Hoover, how things have changed and how poorly those programs have done for what they expect to be. Uh, And now they're going to be joining the SEC, the biggest and best uh, conference in all of football. Well, I think that the value of those two entities joining the league will be – will be fully realized whether or not they're a top five, top 10, top 20 program. And for a comp, you don't have to look much farther than Kentucky basketball, right? And Kentucky basketball is not having a, a good year by any stretch. The last three years have been um, some of the worst in, in their entire history. Yet, if you look at the top 10 viewed, watched, metered games in college basketball this year, Kentucky shows up and I think 40% of them. Um, 
people care about what Kentucky basketball does in, in, in the big picture. Uh, I know I'm asking people to, you know, zoom out a little bit, the big picture of college football, those brands, Texas and Oklahoma carry a lot of weight and a lot of eyeballs. So uh, I don't expect either one would be in their current situation for long, obviously with arch showing up in Austin, um, that's going to change eventually, if not next year, then uh, by year two, when he's, fully immersed in that offense. And I don't know what will happen in, in Oklahoma in the short term. I mean, something's something's got to be fixed. I don't know if there's another Lincoln Riley out there, but it shows the fluidity of collegiate athletics. You lose a head coach like that. You lose a lot of recruiting momentum. You lose uh, a lot of interest. Things can change. Uh, but I think those two brands have staying power, which is why the league and the media partners are going to pay so much more for them. So we record this outro immediately after the intro. So even though you guys have watched like six to seven minutes of content, like I'm still upset about how the way Nick treated me, but we do want you to watch our shorts. All right. It helps the brand. You just broke so many people's hearts, David. I think that they were expecting nobody like cares. we waited for like seven minutes and then came back. At the end of the day, nobody cares. Like, do you really <laughs> care when you watch a movie? Like, let's say you're watching The Godfather that they, it took months to, to film. Or do you think it happened three hours continuously? Well, I mean, if I'm a little kid, maybe I think that, but you're right. You got a good point. I don't know. This is maybe the worst rewind we've ever done, but with the most class and the most character. I actually think it's the best rewind, outro, See? and intro we've ever done. See, again, arguing about everything. You can't just allow something to <laughs> just, Nick, tell people what to do. Like, subscribe, comment, share, watch our shorts, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Texags Radio on Twitter, Texags Recruiting on Instagram, all kinds of stuff. Go subscribe. Thanks. Bye. Bye.